Hello and welcome back to the Football Zone and in this video we're going to be focusing on the subject of the football return like we were last week and today we're picking out a possible date of the return and how that then could lead on to next season and the season after that. Now let's get straight on to it. Now we haven't been told much about a potential return for football until last week when the EFL told teams not to return to training until May the 16th at the earliest. Uh, their aim will then to be complete the season in 56 days when, when they will start playing again in June and hope to finish in August. Now I presume that includes playoffs and everything. So And I imagine the Premier League will follow suit. So based on that, they will return in the middle of June or early June say around about 8th, 9th, 10th of June I should imagine will be the return date I've decided that I'm going to try and make a calendar of how the football season will look for the foreseeable future so let's get straight into it So as you can see I've put together a provisional calendar for the rest of the season presuming they go back on in the middle of June like was proposed and the season will start on the 13th of June once the players have had a couple of weeks to get May back up to speed. Maybe have a friendly behind closed doors. And then on the 13th of June, the season restarts, I imagine, behind closed doors. And then we play out for a month or so, nine games. So it should be a decent amount of time before we finish. If we play Tuesday nights, like we should get it done right around about the 18th of July. And then... As the Premier League has slightly more games, I think, and they're obviously much more lazier. They get their season will finish about a week later on the twenty fifth of July, and then on the eighth of August the playoffs have finished, um, which I should imagine will start about a week after the EFL season finishes. Um, these games will probably all be have to play behind closed doors, and then I reckon we'll have a month off, which you're about to see. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get crowds back in. Once the 2021 season has finished, there will be a four-week gap bet between the uh, start of the 21-22 season and the first two weeks I'm proposing a mandatory shutdown of the training ground. Players get two weeks off as they're going to be very busy for the next year or two afterwards. So they deserve a couple of weeks off. Then on the 22nd of August at the earliest, they're allowed back in to prepare for the next season. Maybe play one or two pre-season friendlies and just get in, get into it. And then the 5th of September, the season starts. All in the meantime, a transfer window of the 1st of August to the 1st of October. So, what well after the season is finished. And just going into the first month or two of the season. So, what it would likely be in the actual one. So, that won't affect that too much. But I'm expecting a quieter transfer window this year due to the financial crash due to COVID-19. So as you can see, I've added our international breaks and another transfer window, which is just in its usual slot, uh, beginning of January to the end of January. And I think there'll be two international breaks, um, as there isn't really any need for them now, because I presume the Nations League have been cancelled. So I'll just be friendlies on the 10th to the 24th of October. So towards the beginning of the season and the 13th of March to 27th of March. And that's where they normally are most of the time. So no real changes there. As you can see, I've now updated it to the end of the 2021 season. The 8th of May is when the leagues end, which I think is one week later than it's supposed to end. But that's all right. I think we can easily catch up the time by playing more Tuesday nights, scrapping FA Cup replays. I uh, don't think we need to get rid of the Carabao Cup. Um, maybe play yes games in Europe. Um, yeah, so that sort of thing. No winter break. I think we can probably easily catch up the time, even though I'm sure it won't be popular with Jurgen Klopp, and I'm sure we have to probably put the youth team out a couple of times because these poor players have to play every couple of days. How tragic! And then within two weeks, we'll finish the playoffs, um, and then teams players can join up with their nation ahead of the Euros and the dates of the Euros are already decided from the 11th of June to the 11th of July so that should go ahead as planned I didn't see any reason to change that now I'll just get into uh, pre-season for the next year and then that'll be it so for the beginning of the season after that there should be a shorter pre-season for the players who have just come back they get 10 days off or so 
and then from the 20th to the 14th of August, which is a week or two later than the season normally starts, uh, there is pre-season, and then they can catch up again. The transfer window will be, on, be as normal, and hopefully by then football will be back to normal until a Winter World Cup. Unbelievable stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to explain it all in full, and then that'll be the end of the video. So there is my calendar in full. Obviously, it's easier said than done to get it all like that, but I think that's pretty much spot on. It gets the current season finished. It means we have the transfer windows like normal, uh, fits the Euros in, and the season isn't finished too late, and we managed to catch up time. The only issue is the cup season in the cu the cups in the current season may not be able to may not be able to fit in. But I suppose you could play it from the twenty fifth of July to the eighth of August in line with the playoffs. And I think we're just gonna have to say goodbye to the European competitions at least for this season, as travel restrictions will be still be in place and it'll be hard to complete it. But that's all for today's guys. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.